This is something I've wanted to know for a long time. What are the most optimal pairings for types in the Pokemon trading card game? As it turns out, this question led to a lot of interesting discoveries, but let's start with the basics. If you're not familiar, types refer to these different elemental properties associated with both Pokemon and their moves. Each Pokemon has one or two types, with each type having their own set of weaknesses and resistances. However, each move also has its own type, regardless of what type of Pokemon is using it. For example, the Psychic type isn't weak to the Normal type, but is weak to the Dark type. So, if a Normal Pokemon uses a Dark type attack against a Psychic Pokemon, it'll be super effective. Now there are two ways to look at this interaction, from the offensive side and from the defensive side. Offensively, Dark type moves are strong against Psychic Pokemon. Defensively, Psychic Pokemon are weak to Dark type moves. This distinction is important because the types Dark is strong against and the types Psychic is weak against are two totally different lists. This may all seem obvious to some people, but it really tripped me up in the beginning, so I wanted to get everyone on the same page. So the question is, from which side should we compare types? Well, since this is in relation to the trading card game, we want to compare types offensively. This is because Pokemon cards of the same type can have different weaknesses and resistances depending on their original types in the video games, but their attacks can't have different types. Basically, Pokemon in the TCG are weak to a card's type, not its specific attacks, which is the opposite of how the games work. So when merging types from the games into the TCG, offensive similarity is much more important to maintaining accuracy than defensive similarity. For instance, if a Grass-type Pokémon was brought into the card game as a Water-type, it could still retain its resistance to Electric and weakness to Fire, which is the opposite case for Water-types. However, its attacks would be hitting Fire-type cards for weakness, which is totally wrong as Grass is resisted by Fire. This is why the Water-type is actually paired with the Ice-type, which is also resisted by Fire. In fact, Water and Ice is ranked 6th in similarity, while Water and Grass is ranked 2nd. But where did these rankings come from? Well, here's what I did. First, I copied this Pokemon type matchup chart into Excel. I did change any type immunities into just resistances, since the card game doesn't have immunities and because it'll make the math easier. Since we're looking at the offensive slash attacking type similarity, we'll use the chart's rows. I made two drop-down menus that copy the corresponding rows of data for the selected type names. Then, each column's values get compared and given a score below it. If the damage multipliers are the same, it gets a 1. If one multiplier is 1 times damage, and the other is half times or 2 times damage, it gets a 0.5. Not completely different, but not total opposites either. Those get a 0. So, the highest possible score is 18, which is one point for each type that exists as of now. But I don't want to see just one type comparison at a time, I want to compare all of them at once. So I did some copy-pasting and compare normal to every other type, then fighting, then flying, and so on, until I had a table for every possible type matchup, which turned out to be 324. But after sorting each type's matchup scores from highest to lowest, I realized that some types are inherently more similar to every other type than others, usually by having fewer non-neutral matchups. For example, the normal type hits the least amount of weaknesses and resistances, tied with Dragon at 3 types and followed by Ghost with 4. On the other end of the spectrum, there's Fighting, which has the most weaknesses and resistances with 11, just ahead of Bug and Grass, which have 10. These more distinct types have the opposite effect of matching poorly with most other types, giving them lower scores on average than the more impartial types. To fix this, I found the average of each type's set of matchups, then subtracted it from the original scores. So types with higher averages will have more subtracted from them and vice versa. This makes all the scores less relevant to their type's complexity, but it's still not enough to get the complete picture. Take Normal and Fighting for instance. When Fighting is matched with other types, Normal scores relatively high, but when Normal is matched up instead, Fighting ranks the absolute lowest. 
what we need is to compare each type's matchup with their counterparts just like this. So this table gets each matchup score, finds its counterpart score, and adds them together. This final total is the best, most unbiased measurement of similarity I could come up with, and the results are really interesting. I made one more table to sort these scores from high to low and take out the repeats, so let's have a look. As it turns out, the most similar Pokemon types by far are Ghost and Dark. After that comes a few more intuitive pairings like Normal Flying and Normal Dragon, but then there's more surprising ones like Normal Poison, Dragon Fairy, Ground Water, and Water Grass. This is where the other aspect of combining types becomes evident. They need to make sense thematically. While it is true that pairing water with grass or ground types is more accurate than pairing it with ice, it's clear that these Pokémon and their elemental traits are very distinct from one another, and combining them into a single type would be ignoring these qualities. In that aspect, the card game is just fine and goes with the obvious combinations based on theming before accuracy. Currently, there are 10 types in the TCG, with colorless including normal and flying Pokémon, grass including grass and bug, fire is fire, water is water and ice, Lightning is electric, fighting is fighting, rock, and ground, metal is steel, psychic is psychic, fairy, and ghost, darkness is dark and poison, and dragon is dragon. It hasn't always been like this though. Pokemon's first generation of games had three less types than we have now, so the TCG started with seven. When two new types, Steel and Dark, were introduced in Generation 2, the card game got two equivalent types, Metal and Darkness. In Gen 5, Dragon suddenly got its own type instead of coming into the card game as colorless as it had always done. Gen 6 introduced the new Fairy type, which got its own type in the TCG like Steel and Dark had. However, that type was retired in Gen 8, and fairy Pokémon are now brought in as Psychic-type cards, which brings us to the present-day 10 types. So, based on this current incarnation of the game, what are some reasonable changes the Pokémon company could make to these types without drastically altering the game? Well, I've come up with three, and the first two deal with the troublesome Poison type. Poison isn't a distinct enough element like fire or water to warrant its own energy type, but it isn't an obvious fit with any existing types either. Perhaps because of this, it's been assigned to three different types over the years, originally coming into the game as grass type, then moving to psychic starting in generation 4, and switching again to darkness in gen 8. All three types make sense thematically, but which of them is the most accurate? Well, let's look at the chart. Normal and Flying are at the top, being the 2nd and ninth closest type matchups overall. After that though is Bug, which is paired with Grass in the TCG. Grass however is near the bottom of the list, so pairing it with Poison isn't very ideal. Right below Bug is Fairy, which is combined with Psychic and Ghost to make the Psychic type. Although Fairy is less similar to Poison than Bug is, Psychic and Ghost are both more similar to it than Grass. So which type should Poison be paired with? Adding up the totals for each possibility, we get an exact tie. But there's a perfect solution for this. If you remember, Ghost and Dark is the most accurate type combination, and they're pretty similar in character as well. When Darkness was added to the card game, it would have made sense to move Ghost over from Psychic to more evenly distribute the types. I think this was the idea when Poison was moved to Darkness, but they are not similar at all and barely rank above Grass. So first, move Ghost from Psychic to Darkness. With this change, the Psychic type loses its biggest detractor from Poison's compatibility, now making it the definitive choice for Poison to be paired with. The Metal type has a similar story to Darkness, except it's never been paired with another type before, but maybe it should be. See, the fighting type includes fighting, rock, and ground. While these three seem visually coherent, rock is a rather bad pairing for ground and an extremely bad pairing for fighting. Fighting and ground, however, are a great match. 
So could the rock type move from fighting and into metal? It's really the only other type that makes sense. And even though the pairing isn't the most accurate, its only major conflict is dealing with fire, which is far more than you can say for fighting. I mean, come on, rock and steel really aren't that different when you think about it. The only other change I could make a case for is removing the dragon type like Fairy was. As we've seen, the normal flying and dragon types are all very similar, so dragon Pokemon moving back to the colorless type with them is only natural. Also, I think having less types in the card game is generally a good thing. Unlike the Pokemon video games where a broad type spectrum can be easily covered by a diverse team, the trading card game is more conducive to playing a select few types, since Pokemon of a certain type usually require energy cards of that type to attack, and there's more synergy within types from supporting cards, etc. The more types that exist, the more that type-dependent mechanics like weakness, resistance, and some abilities and trainer cards will be spread out over these types, and the chances that two opposing decks will be affected by these mechanics is smaller and less predictable. Therefore, I think having fewer types leads to more interconnection and makes strategizing around the metagame more possible. The card game's type system could be the topic of a whole other video, but I need to get more familiar with actually playing the game first before I say more. For now, I'm just gonna look around at these cool charts. Like, here's the bottom of the final list, with fighting and ice being the least compatible types of all. In fact, if you notice, the types I pointed out as being the most specialized, like fighting, grass, and bug, appear frequently down here, while the most neutral types, normal and dragon, don't appear at all. Now, if we apply the changes to the type pairings I went through, which one is still the least accurate? There is fighting and rock, which we took care of, poison and grass, ground and rock, here we go. Bug and Grass, barely into the positives. Bug does pair well with Poison like we saw, but that would require making a whole new type altogether. It'd be more necessary than the Dragon type at least. Actually, it would also get rid of another less than ideal interaction right above it, Poison and Psychic, and make both types more accurate. What do you think of that idea? 